Welcome to Music at Midday from National City Christian Church. I'm Mike McMahon, Artistic Director. Today, we're pleased to welcome you to an online performance by Nicholas Will, who is Director of Liturgical Music, Organist and Lecturer at Mount St. Mary's Seminary in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and also Adjunct Professor of Music at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. For the last two years, from 2018 until 2020, Nicholas served as Director of Liturgical Music at the Pontifical North American College in Rome. Today's performance was recorded originally at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we're grateful to the church for allowing us to use that concert today for Music at Midday. If you're able, we ask you to offer your support to this series by sending a donation in the mail to Music at Midday at National City Christian Church, or by going online to the church website, nationalcitycc.org. Click near the top of the page on the word music, and in the drop-down menu, click on Friday Music at Midday, and then about two-thirds of the way down the page, you'll find a link to the donation page where you can make your offering. We hope you'll enjoy today's concert.
Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you all today and to play this marvelous instrument in this magnificent space. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Jim Burns for the invitation to be here with you. Just a few words about the next piece. We, we started with a piece by uh, J.S. Bach, and we continue with a piece by a composer who influenced J.S. Bach, the Roman Girolamo Frescobaldi, who was the organist at St. Peter's Basilica for many years and uh, was renowned throughout Italy, indeed throughout Europe, for his skills as a player. And uh, this toccata that will be played is uh, uh, subtitled Da Sonarsi alla Levazione, to be played at the elevation. And that is referring to the moment in the Roman Catholic Mass when the bread and wine, after they have been consecrated, uh, and as Roman Catholics believe, have become the body and blood of Christ, are elevated by the priest for all to see. Of course, this is a very poignant moment in the Mass and uh, became common practice in Italy for organists after that moment, after the elevation, to play uh, a toccata on the organ uh, to um, heighten the sense of intimacy and uh, mystery and mysticism of that moment. And so these composers uh, utilized all sorts of uh, very odd harmonies uh, and, and turns of phrase to, to accomplish that task. Uh, in fact, the harmonies that Frescobaldi used uh, really wouldn't be heard again until the 19th century, until the Romantic era. So they're really remarkable pieces of music. So here is uh, Frescobaldi's Elevation Toccata. Thank you. 
Our next piece also has a Vatican connection. The Miserere Mei Deus uh, is a setting of Psalm 51, Be Merciful to Me, O God, For I Have Sinned, by the um, 17th century composer Gregorio Allegri. Uh, this was a composition made very famous. Uh, many of you may have uh, already heard it. It features soaring soprano lines uh, uh, and is a very haunting setting of, of that penitential psalm. Now, for many, many years, this psalm was only permitted to be sung by the Sistine Chapel Choir by the Sistine, uh, in the Sistine Chapel uh, during Tenebrae, during Holy Week. And it was forbidden to take copies of the score out of the library under pain of excommunication. And so in the 18th century and into the 19th century, it was very common for pilgrims and tourists to pack the Sistine Chapel during Holy Week to view the ancient and mysterious rites and to hear this uh, ancient music, unaccompanied choral singing, which by that point was very uncommon. It was uh, quite exotic. And a young Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, uh, as, a, as a boy on a tour with his father while in Rome, uh, happened to visit those same tenebrae services. And he heard the choir sing the uh, Allegri, and then he went home, and he wrote it out by memory. And uh, he went back the next day, because they would have sung the Miserere twice that week. He went home, or uh, went back the next day to check his work, and he was, he was right. And so th the legend goes that uh, the Pope, instead of excommunicating the boy, was so impressed with his feat of musical agility that he blessed him. And uh, so it's a very fascinating um, story in the, the history of sacred music. Now, Franz Liszt, the 19th century composer, many of you probably know him as a piano virtuoso, a composer of some of the most fiendishly difficult piano works uh, in the repertoire. Uh, you may not know that he was also, uh, particularly later in life, a very religious man. In fact, he lived in Rome for a number of years later in life. He even took minor orders and wore a cassock around the city. Be, he insisted on being called Abbe Liszt. Uh, and and uh, he wrote a lot of sacred music as well, uh, and some organ music. And this piece that I'm going to play now is uh, um, a musical commentary, perhaps, on that little episode that I shared with you between the Sistine Chapel Choir and, and Mozart. So uh, Liszt surely would have been familiar with the Allegri. He obviously was familiar with uh, the, the Mozart story. And so we start with a very dark uh, and uh, um, lugubrious um, iteration of the of the Allegri uh, and then we have a, a very quick build up uh, to to full organ very very passionate that all that all uh, falls away and then out of the mist comes Mozart's Ave Verum Corpus perhaps his most famous piece of, of sacred music and Liszt himself comments on this piece, he, he says the, the miserere uh, represents the anguish of, of man, our, our sorrow um, uh, on, this, on this earth, perhaps something uh, with which we can all identify a little bit more these days. And then, of course, the Mozart, which follows, is to represent um, the, the serenity, the beatitude of the Almighty, who comes to our need in every occasion.
close this afternoon's concert, I've chosen something which will showcase the uh, beautiful French sounds on this magnificent organ, and in particular the reed stops. Uh, César Franck was a Belgian, but he spent uh, most of his uh, uh, life and pretty much his entire career uh, in Paris, where he was an organist and teacher. And his pièce héroïque uh, is a, a wonderful example of um, a type of repertoire that uh, had its origins perhaps in the revolutionary period in, in, in France. So we have this very strong um, opening theme, and then we have a diminutive lyrical secondary theme, and then a little bit of tossing between the two until finally the, the second theme, which we originally hear as, as, as weak, uh, is, is triumphant. Um, uh, with the full resources of the organ behind it. Um, some relationship to sonata form is, as well here. Uh, but uh, it's a joy to play this type of repertoire on this organ. It's been a joy to play all of this music and share it with you today. Thank you for tuning in and for this opportunity, and may God bless you all. <laughs>